Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> yourself, man. Well, look, we're going to move on because we're going to talk about uh, Vote Leave, the official uh, Leave campaign, which has dropped its appeal against a £61,000 fine for breaking electoral law over spending limits. We can talk to Emma Graham Harrison, who is from The Guardian and The Observer. Um, Emma, can you explain what Vote Leave were found to have done? Hi, so Vote Leave broke electoral law, the Electoral Commission found. Um, there's a series of um, uh, infractions they found of the law but at the heart of it is the fact that they went over spending limits by about half a million pounds or nearly half a million pounds um, and they did that through making a what they described as a donation to another campaign group but the Electoral Commission found that they actually coordinated the spending of this uh, 675,000 um, pounds they describe what happened as serious breaches of electoral law and these are laws that were made by Parliament to ensure that our elections are fair and transparent. So I think you know, what happened would be a matter of, of serious national concern at, at any time really, that any vote had had something like this happen in a campaign. But I think it's particularly a matter of concern when you have um, two men who are hoping to become our next Prime Minister, uh, Boris Johnson and Michael Gove, who had very senior positions in this campaign All right. um, over the period when it was involved in breaking electoral law. And we haven't heard from them about right. this. Right. Now, Vote Leave have decided to drop the appeal, as I said. What are you hearing about that, the reasons for it? Well, I mean, it's obviously really for Vote Leave to, to say why they're dropping the appeal, not, not for me to, to speak on their behalf. Um, in a statement, they said they dropped it for, electoral, uh, sorry, for financial reasons. Um, as regards that, I would just say, you know, this is a group who've proved themselves extremely effective at fundraising in the past. So, you know, there is a question about why they wouldn't be continuing their fundraising um, if they considered the appeal essential to clear their oh. name. Um, and yesterday we did see uh, one of the senior members of Vote Leave uh, talking about that. Um, and she didn't really address the issue of, of financial concerns. She All right. Well, let, on other things. Steve Becker, you were on the campaign committee of Vote Leave. Is it the right decision to drop the appeal? It's really a matter for the Vote Leave directors. I'm not a director of Vote Leave. But do you think it was right to drop the appeal? Well, I think they possibly may have found they dropped it because it's too expensive to keep pursuing it. But these really are matters for the Vote Leave directors and they're not questions that I can answer. Fraser? Well, the fine was, what, 60 grand. They say they've spent almost a million quid fighting mm. this. So you can see how the economics don't stack up. And they were fined, I think, 40 grand for sending text messages without permission. They couldn't show they had permission. But that's because they deleted the database, just like the Electoral Commission had asked them to. So this whole thing is incredibly messy. And the bottom line for me is that the Leave side were vastly outspent by the Remain side because they had the government as well as the Remain campaign, and still leave one. I can see why that drives people but mad. But this is but... about breaking the law, isn't it? I mean, you may say it's not a level playing yeah. field in terms of who spent Certainly what, um, and they were outspent in your view, but in terms of the actual judgment, uh, I mean, Steve Baker, at the time of the original judgment, Vote Leave said it was wholly inaccurate and suggested that the Electoral Commission was politically motivated. Do you share that view? I am concerned about it because various senior figures have made statements which do indicate they have views on one side of the question. But I think this is a moment to be extremely serious about what is going on. As I said earlier, I think democracy itself is on the table here. We have a large number of these institutions which regulate us one way or another and it's absolutely essential that all of those institutions are politically neutral and scrupulously apply the, the law equally to all. Now we're talking about vote leave today but there have also been problems with other campaigns um, and I think it's very important if we're to have these institutions and have them operate credibly, they must be scrupulously neutral. Jonathan, um, what is Can your... I just jump in? Yes. No, no one else has been found guilty of uh, serious breaches of electoral law. And I think uh, sort of bringing mm. this, uh, talking about this in terms of who uh, won the referendum or making it a question of what the result is, is, is a mistake in many ways because what we're talking about here is serious breaches of the laws that mm. are at the heart mm. of our democracy, mm. the laws that keep our elections fair and transparent and regardless of whether or not it had an impact on the outcome we should be asking ourselves as a country serious questions about how this happened and why people who were involved in it haven't really been called to account okay they've they've dropped the appeal neither gove nor johnson has spoken publicly about 
what happened. They've not tried to defend themselves, to explain it. Um, yesterday, uh, Gisela Stewart was on the Mars show. She didn't apologise for what happened. And right. To talk about the level of the, the fine, it seems, again, a very strange way to look at it. I mean, maybe the fine well, is, is too low, well, but this Steve, is, these are laws that protect so, the I mean, heart of our democracy. Well, so we're all agreed that the law must be obeyed. Right. There's obviously no question about that. The law must be obeyed. Can I, uh, can I ask but, a question? Can I ask a question? Can I, yes, just, can. Can I, just, can I just ask, just, just, let me just ask just a quick question. Was Michael Gove Lord Chancellor at the time when he was bre breaching the law in this way? I think that's a very risky thing for you to say. I don't Michael, know. I don't Michael know if he would wants. have to answer that himself. Well, it's only a question. But, I'm only what, asking what, a well, no, it's a very wasn't. carefully phrased question. I'm sure right. Question, but I, I'm very clear that on the campaign committee, I had nothing to do whatever with the administration of money in Vote Leave. But Steve, you but, did write this. But Steve, but let, me just, let me just read this because viewers yeah. may not know. But in early 2016, yeah. you did send an email to parliamentary colleagues which said it is open to the Vote Leave family to create separate legal entities, each of which could spend 700 thousand pounds. Vote Leave will be able to spend as much money as is necessary to win the referendum. Is that evidence that you and Vote Leave were looking at ways of exceeding spending limits any which way you could? So the reason that I wrote that down and was felt able to send it out in an email to over 100 Conservative MPs was because at the time I sent it I believed it was lawful. Now I am extremely angry with the person who badly advised me. They've never taken responsibility for poorly advising me to the point that I wrote that and have ended up sitting here today having to defend it. But I am absolutely clear that my conscience, my conscience is free of any blemish on this issue. And but I would also point out that in any event, that was written before the regulated period, and people can make mistakes. Sure. So you admit it was a mistake. Who advised you, Steve, I'm not to gonna, do that? I think that he would be better placed to come forward himself. Right. But the actual the issue is also about coordination or joint working, as you know, Stephen. The Electoral Commission said that they'd found significant evidence of coordination with Leave, which was supposed to be the sort of youth arm of the whole campaign, Leave campaign. That's where the real breach came, isn't it? Well, again, I can't answer for that. You'd have to ask the directors of Vote Leave. What I did during the campaign, and indeed before the campaign, was to coordinate, coordinate Conservative MPs. It's a job I've done for a long time now. I think anybody who's ever tried to do it would understand that just to coordinate Conservative MPs is a job in itself. So it's not a question for me. I mean, looking at the points raised by Emma about the leadership campaigns of people yeah. like Boris Johnson and Michael Gove, is it fair to say that they, those campaigns could be tainted by what has happened and the fact that the appeal has been dropped? Well, if I could just come in on a couple of the other issues that were raised mm, there. Um, first of all, I really do have every confidence in the impartiality of our regulatory agencies, whether you're talking about the Electoral Commission um, or uh, the Information Commission. Um, I, I would not question their integrity. I think the problem here is people playing fast and loose with the law, being caught out and also spending an awful long time litigating and trying to force their position against the Electoral Commission, which I don't approve of. Um, it's also interesting to note that this week should see UKIP finally comply with an Information Commissioner's Office um, request for data and information that they made last summer, which UKIP have spent a lot of money um, opposing, they've taken them the ICO mm. to tribunals twice and they've finally been told, right, the end of the road is here, you've got to comply with the law. What does it say about your colleagues, Boris Johnson and Michael Gove? Well, I'd have to look into it a bit more, really. I don't want to condemn, I mean, basically, if I, for example, um, during the heat of an election campaign, um, candidates are not necessarily across the detail of expenditure. You might say they should be, but they've got agents, etc. And I don't want to condemn people without knowing whether they actually were implicit in the decision. Do you think this will be? Do you think this will be an election issue if it becomes a leadership contest? That these are the sorts of things that will be discussed. I frankly, I think it's even more fundamental than leadership elections. I think to speak in one breath about democracy and the next breath and threats to democracy, and the same breath to say it's okay to breach the law, strikes me as a really yes. odd way to go no about one's politics. Saying, yes. no one's and I have okay to say, to it's exactly the, the tone of politics is being conducted at the moment. You're going to have these extremes, and people are not going to talk about things sensibly. Yes. We're going to end up in a real mess, and that's where we have ended up. No one is suggesting a. Breach. A breaches of the law are acceptable, least of all me. So you condemn this breach of the law? 
I condemn all breaches you of the law. condemn this breach of the law. I condemn this breach of the law and all breaches... Well, that's a ridiculous way of putting it. No, I, it's I, not. I, I but it's condemn, not. It's not the I rule of law. If the law is has... kind of what our constitution oh, is based Emily, on. I know. I'm sorry. It's all over my website people, that I support the rule of law. But we've got two people in senior positions in this campaign who now want to be leaders of the Conservative Party and want to be Prime Minister. If we don't abide by the rule of law, you cannot get out of it by saying, oh, well, we lost, but we would have won if we'd only had a few more, a uh, little bit more money Emily, to appeal it. I cannot you have let you get away with respond. delivering this lecture and in, by implication smearing people. I am absolutely <laughs> committed to parliamentary democracy and the rule of law. That is why I'm in politics. As I've already said, I'm enraged that I was badly advised. It is essential that we uphold the law. But, of course, the reason for upholding the law in this respect is to ensure the fairness of campaigns. And as Fraser's already, already pointed out... All right. The, the, the uh, degree the law to is which... The law. Hang on, hang on. Absolutely the law is the law. But why is it that the law matters? It's in order to ensure all right, justice. I'm going, I'm going to... And, and the and Remain said, campaign right, well, vastly outspent Well, and we've leave. said that they're different things because they didn't breach or they weren't found to have breached the law. Um, Emma, a final word before we let you go. I think it's important when you talk about details of expenditure. We're talking about £675,000 that was given to Believe and uh, nearly half pizzas. a million pounds over a spending, uh, the electoral spending cap. That spending cap was only £7 million. So we're not talking about you know, expenses that somebody spent on you know, their lunch or a taxi or something. These are huge amounts of money. Um, and again, we're not talking here, I don't think, about who won the election or what the result is. This is about safeguarding elections. If people break the laws that protect Ooh. our elections and protect our democracy, there need to be consequences, because right. otherwise you have to ask yourself what happens with the next election. Emma Graham-Harrison, thank you very thank much. You. Steve Baker, thank you for coming thank in. Thank you.